this long in German with a lot of gutturals that I don't have the voice for. Seventeen hundred something. So it's a hundred years later, basically. Hundred and fifty. Hundred and fifty. After Purcell's yeah. opera. This is 100 years after Purcell, it's 150 years after our time. Uh, I think. How are you going to get people to be trained to sing like yeah. that in the 1630s? That's why Marla is in Magdeburg and is affiliated with the Royal Academy of Music. And that's why we have an Italian. Because she has a recording that says, I know someone can sing like this. That's why we have an Italian castrato in Magdeburg. Uh, I don't think he's gonna sing like that. You'd be surprised. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. There's still some. There are what two recordings of Castrati singing? Yeah, I've heard. And I've heard some of it. Incredible. But that. I got backing up a little bit. Oh. Uh, uh, mass singing. Choral. How they react to uh, Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Really it's big. just more voices. It's bigger. It's really I mean, big. Yeah, they, I mean, they, the, they, the, had, they had religious spectacles with large choirs, so that it wouldn't be totally unheard of. In Wales, okay. it's not. That's in a normal. Wales, it's, it's much more common. Yeah, if you think, for instance, of those outdoor Jesuit spectacles mm -hmm. that they the, put on in the summers. The passion casts, play in, in um, of hundreds southern Germany. And, you know, they would pull Omar in everybody Omar in Omar the blasted mm -hmm. city who had ever sung a it note the tenth year and mass them as a choir so in the back because we they were doing it outside maybe to walk it. Okay. Um, we okay. couldn't afford it. I noticed that with that. You did this comparison with the six with just the, this is the beginning of opera. Yes, let's take a nap. Uh, to the seventeenth century. Okay. Uh, but well, why are they going to stop? Why are they going to even go to the 17th century? Why aren't they going to go to Judy Garland Bing Crosby from this? That was where my discussion was going. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, there's, there is a whole, from this, I mean, I could spend hours just talking about the, the development of opera through Verdi and Guccini and Bellini and all of those guys. I could I could Operetta. go into Gilbert and Sullivan from there. I could go into Rogers and Hammerstein and Rogers and Hart and Jerome Kern and Cole Stephen Porter. Sondheim and all of those guys. Uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Okay. I mean that their opera is just opening the topic of opera opens up the whole production, the the whole gamut okay. yeah, of vocal point, production. I, I understand. My point is that in I guarantee, I, I, I'm not at all sure that there's going to be the Verdi from the 17th century, but I guarantee you there's somebody, there's Bing Crosby singing White Christmas recorded a dozen times. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be able, they're, they're going to have access to Bing and Elvis and uh, don't, don't nobody, you know, stay off my blue suede shoes and Boy George. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, yeah. and all Guys these and dolls, and they're going to be able to pick. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to pick all of Phantom. Their, they their will have a recording. Yeah. Still have a, a, a DVD the, of Phantom. It's still a radio age, so it's and they've got the musical video programmers Guys and really dolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, my point God. is oh. that video tape show. in VLA, uh, musical. musical. I collect VLA, musicals. The uh, Catholic broadcasting station and in the seven brides houses. they would head into the woods what are the I people seen going to want to hear what I live in is Christina the going to want to hear <laughs> what is I have wanted to, want to hear? I haven't seen Wicked uh, because I read the book and threw it what are yeah, the movers and checkers in that book going to want to hear and I submit that it's as likely it seems as, to me to be actually somebody who, who, who was just listening to the Oh, woe is me, 1600 first operas is going to be a lot more comfortable with Bing than was that thing from the 17th century. I don't know. Maybe. Um, the problem is that you're going to see. Maybe not, because, because 
the music that Bing sang and the music that Frank Sinatra sang, very smooth, very melodic, but very, very heavy jazz underpinnings. Oh, yeah. Very syncopated. And there's also the high brow, low brow factor. Yes. Yeah, or it's not really yeah I'm... I'm not. I'm not saying that that music will not get exposure. I did not use it in my sampler. You know, I, I agree. I, I'm probably not very balanced in terms of of the the lesser brow music, but the that is the, you know. There's no question that that music will have it. Will you know? In in my stories, I refer to the music of Johnny Cash. I refer to the to to the music of of, of We're people from that. Yeah. That stratum of, of, of music, you know, for for the purpose of what I was doing here, I was just showing showing the kinds of things that people could maybe the extremes of what people could run into. Yeah, I, 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 I understand, <coughs> but, and, and I understood that you were going from the very mellow sort of so mellow it was depressing uh, in its monotony of the, the early area well. of the first opera. Herself. To the very wild, very let's see how far we can take it of somebody like Mozart. But um, the people of the time of Mozart, a lot of them didn't. Uh, yeah, but the, but Mozart was rock and roll for his time. No, yeah. right, and so the court the court system that was paying him didn't appreciate what he was doing because the, he, they didn't want rock and roll; they wanted highbrow opera. Uh -huh. But my point is that. If all of these come at it not as not as this is the, the high brown music, this is the low brown music, and all of this stuff that comes out of Grabville is the same brown, so far as the downtimers are concerned. I it is all uptimer music, whether it's from uh, Johnny Cash or uh, yeah how, do they tell, yeah, how do they tell the difference the, between to them, brows? It's all, there's no status you can that, tell. that one gets John Williams doesn't. They wouldn't mm -hmm. understand the term hillbilly music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that is sort of what that thing, that list there is mm -hmm. for. Uh, I'll interrupt David a minute, and we'll go over if we need to. Yeah. Uh, we're We've already gone one. over. It's already unless you, unless quarter you to don't five. Want to hear a uh, selection from uh, Maple Stakes. No, uh, well I can't because I have like. No, no, no he I, was going to read no, in I here have, before your panel is going to read it. Before your panel starts. If we okay. get this finished. Okay. But uh, Laura and I have been working. We had the vocal music teacher from the middle school in Grantville hired by the boarding school in Kvedlinburg, oh, which caters, caters to the daughters of really the lower nobility and upper middle class, the people who can afford to send their daughters to the school for the best education available at the time and will do it. And I, Laura and I have set this up for the program that she does for the parents, the grandparents, and the local worthies of Kedlinburg after a semester of working with the children to introduce them to uptime music. From that perspective, <coughs> assuming that the audience is going to be very favorable, because after all, these are their daughters and granddaughters doing the performance. Right. And we're opening it with the littlest kids first and second graders marching in to Tom Paxton's The Wonderful Toy. It would hop when it stopped and pop when it hopped and bang when it stood still. You know, the little girls marching along to that just to warm the audience up. Then as we bring in the girls who will range in age up through mid-teens, They'll start with something familiar. What child is this? Set to green sleeves, which was an available thing at the time. A couple of modern arrangements of early modern music. Them pastores are uh, saying this survived to the 20th century and it was still sung. 
Uh, then what was then very modern, uh, Gerhard and Krieger's, Oh Lord, how shall I meet thee? So far it's all old. So far it's all, all music from the 17th century. From the seven, except the Pax Club. Yes, yeah, but they're the starting with 17th century music, pointing out to these people, your music lasted to our day. It was oh. still sung, still rearranged, still appreciated. And then uh, they will do O Savior Rend the Heavens Wide, which is Spey, and uh, O How a Rose Air Blooming. This will be basically their thing. Then they'll say, and using this same type of melody, we'll do Home on the Range, Streets of Laredo, and Marty Robbins, El Paso. You know, moving from the simplest of Western <laughs> melodies to the most complex and syncopated very shortly. Then, because of the attraction of dance music, Once in Love with Amy. Once in Love with Amy. Always in Love with Amy. Ever and ever fascinated by her. You know, and the girls will dance to it. So they will be, they're on a stage. Parents and grandparents will able to be able to see that it's dance music. Then they will go on, and this is within the limits of the school program. Go tell it on the mountain. Shall we gather at the river? Thomas Dorsey's precious Lord take my hand, bringing in the jazz. This land is your land, with a wall map of the uptime USA and a pointer showing where he's talking about, and close with amazing grace. Five notes. School program. Introducing uptime music to a non-sophisticated audience, but every one of them will be able to sing and to play an instrument. That's and it. knock them on their feet. They'll drive them nuts. But because it's their kids, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, well, you know, they're doing it, they're enjoying it. Careful, Careful. all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just tripped. Thank you, David. And, and one of the things that I said early on was that there was not going to be a systematic exposure to this. Yeah. Guys are going to stumble across, you know, this guy's going to find this, this guy's going to find that, this other guy's going to find <coughs> something else. And it's going to be very higgledy-piggledy how yeah. this stuff comes out and who finds what and where he takes it. Um, the, I can't remember his name, the guy, the farmer, um, uh, that lost half his land to the town and they had to figure Bernie. out. Bernie, uh, Bernie Newhouse. Bernie Newhouse. He had to sell his tractor, remember that the eight track tape player in it, and he liked to listen to while he was uh, plowing. It would be interesting for somebody to play the piano, what music he liked to listen while plowing. Yeah. That might be an interesting collection there. What do you Bernie want? Newhouse. One last piece. Um, for all I know, it might be Boy George. I love this piece. This is later. But I love jazz, so. Okay. Sophisticated. That piece, I'm going to end with that.